From popular theater venues hosting a range of performances that are rumored to be haunted by restless spirits tied to their checkered pasts, to historic hotels where the ghosts of those who died within long ago still roam after dark, are you prepared to explore our fourth list of some of the most chillingly haunted places in Oregon? Number 5. The Roseland Theater the Roseland Theater, located off Northwest 6th Avenue in Portland, Oregon, is a popular music venue and restaurant that, by one local publication, was actually dubbed the best haunted venue around in reference to a murder that transpired on site in 1990. Historically, the Apostolic Faith Church would purchase land now holding the theater from the A. Meyer Estate in 1922 and would promptly set to work on the construction of a two-story structure on site. In 1982, Larry Hurwitz would purchase this aged property and would convert this building into a music venue called Starry Night. Hurwitz would sell his operation in 1991, however, claiming he had no support from the local music scene, after which its new owners, Double T would re-establish the venue as the Roseland Theater and would launch massive renovations from 1995 to 1997 in an effort to accommodate growing numbers through their rise in popularity. The Roseland remains open into the present, offering various concerts, the Roseland Grill, and Peter's Room for more intimate showcases. Rumors of the Roseland's hauntings began in 1990 when the club's 21-year-old publicity agent, Timothy Timothy Moreau was murdered on site in what was believed to be a planned assassination to prevent him from blowing the whistle on a counterfeit ticket operation he'd unraveled. While Tim's body was never located, Larry Hurwitz and one accomplice were finally convicted of his murder in the year 2000. Now, tales tell the young professional spirit remains within the Roseland, restless over his untimely demise, and a number of terrifying accounts highlight instances in which guests feel sudden, sharp pains around their necks, coupled with the fleeting inability to breathe, a phantom response rumored to be tied to the manner by which Tim was killed. Also reported across the premises and not necessarily believed to be tied to the murder of Moreau are extreme cold spots, disembodied voices and footsteps, constant electronic malfunctions, and accounts of objects sighted moving on their own. Number 4. The Columbia Gorge Hotel and Spa the Columbia Gorge Hotel and Spa, located off Westcliff Drive in Hood River, Oregon, is a prominent hotel honored as one of the historic hotels of America by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. It's widely recognized for its hosting of a number of notable names, including the likes of Burt Reynolds and Shirley Temple. Historically, in 1904, land now holding the Columbia originally hosted the Wugwingwin Hotel, and in 1922, the historic Columbia River Highway was laid through the gorge, during which time one Simon Benson, who was involved in construction of the highway, formed a dream of running a hotel at its end, resulting in his purchase of the site from the former Wagwingwin, and in 1921 in the construction of the Columbia Gorge Hotel. Between 1925 and 1952, the hotel would change owners a number of times. Also in 1952, it was closed down and re-established as a retirement home under the neighbors of Woodcraft, and in 1978, it would sell yet again, with its new owners transforming it back into a hotel and reopening it the following year. Sadly, in January of 2009, the site was foreclosed upon. However, in October of the same year, it would sell once more to Vijay Patel's A1 Hospitality Group, who remains in ownership into the present. More recently, between 2009 and 2012, the Columbia Gorge Hotel and Spa would undergo a series of major renovations, and currently, its doors are closed pending the conclusion of kitchen refurbs, which should last through February as of the year of this upload, being 2022. Across this impressive expanse, a number of tales of terror and accounts of the supernatural have surfaced, from various staff members, residents, guests, and the like, with many reporting 
including phantom cigar smoke, encounters with eerie, shadowy figures, and instances of furniture moving on its own, even barricading doors. The full-bodied entity of a man in a frock coat and top hat has been spied hurrying about, and the spirit of a woman in white, believed to be the restless soul of someone who took her own life by way of jumping from the hotel's balcony, has both been encountered roaming and witnessed replaying her final plunge. Lastly, the ghost of a little girl has been sighted near where the pool area used to lie, and some claim room 330 is haunted by a mysterious female apparition that visits at night. Number 3. Oregon State Penitentiary Oregon State Pen, also often referred to as Oregon State Prison and located off of State Street in Salem, Oregon, is an all-male lockup facility boasting the title of being the oldest prison in the state that's infamous for its housing of death row and, incidentally, of the lethal injection chamber. Historically, the first version of this prison was established in Portland in 1851. In 1866, it was moved to its current location in Salem and beginning in 1902 and following a period during which executions were managed in public by county, Oregon State executions would be centralized to the penitentiary alone. The lockup's first cell block was constructed in 1932. In 1937, the Board of Control would begin employing prisoners on state land, and in 1965, the Oregon Women's Correctional Center was established on site, albeit in a different building, to allow for total separation between male and female inmates. In 1991, the site would welcome the establishment of an intensive management unit, which marked the first Supermax unit in Oregon, though in 2009, this unit would be shut down, with its inmates transferred to Snake River. And in 2019, it was decided this old IMU space would be converted for use as a psychiatric facility. Oregon State Pen remains open into the present and is operated by the Oregon Department of Corrections with a maximum capacity of 2,242 heads. Over its lengthy existence, both guards and inmates within OSP have reported a host of chilling ghostly activity, with stories of disembodied voices from empty cells, extreme cold spots, otherworldly gusts of wind through the cell blocks at night, and instances in which individuals have been pushed, grabbed, or even hit by an invisible presence. Alarms have been known to activate without cause, strange silhouettes have been spied in security footage, and a handful of officers have documented responding to cells that appear to be open through their screens, but that when they arrive are actually closed. A popular tale claims that one of the guard towers was constructed atop a former prison graveyard, and those who have worked that particular tower have told of shadowy figures sighted out of the peripheral, as well as of the reoccurring and quite overwhelming feeling that someone is always standing right behind them. A final legend tells of a ghostly inmate held within cell block D, who, at night, can be heard making his way up one side of the stairs and down the other, long after lights out. Number 2. The Baldwin Hotel Museum The Baldwin Hotel Museum, located off of Main Street in Klamath Falls, Oregon, is a historic hotel-turned-museum that holds progressive bragging rights for being the first building to feature indoor plumbing in every room. Historically, the structure was built in 1905 to serve as a hardware store under George Baldwin, and in 1911, foreseeing massive profits from the incoming railroad, he would convert his property for use as a hotel to accommodate all ranges of travelers. George would pass on in 1920 and would leave the hotel to his eldest daughter, Maud. However, running her family business and caring for an ill mother would prove too much. Sadly, Maud would sell the hotel in 1923, before in 1926 taking her own life. Following Maud's passing, hotel operations would be managed by Andrew and Cordelia Moore until their retirement in 1951, after which it was passed on to their daughter Vera Moore Jones and her husband Mart. Unfortunately, a series of financial setbacks would eventually result in the hotel's closure in 1977, after which it would fall into disrepair. At a point, the age structure would actually be considered for demolition before concerned locals banded together to alter its fate, and eventually, these stalwart actions would lead to the site's purchase under Klamath County, who would promptly renovate the building before reopening it to the public as a museum. 
The Baldwin Hotel Museum remains open into the present, offering 40 total rooms of antiques and artifacts, and tours, which even include highly popular nighttime flashlight romps for the truly adventurous. The Baldwin has long been surrounded by a slew of ghost stories, and over the years, both staff and guests have reported disembodied voices from empty rooms, footsteps heard from empty spaces, lights that flick from on to off on their own, and strange scratching noises from within the walls. A number of tales tell of encounters with both shadowy figures and full-bodied apparitions believed to be the spirits of former owners, managers, and customers, and several informal investigations have yielded high EMF levels, chilling EVPs, and abnormal temperature changes. Formerly located on the fourth story was Maud Baldwin's photography studio, and across the property, though primarily on this floor, many have described encounters with a phantom bearing her likeness. Number 1. The Lodge at Hot Lake Springs the Lodge at Hot Lake Springs, located off Oregon Highway 203 in Hot Lake, just out of La Grande, Oregon, is a restored 19th century hotel turned bed and breakfast that was formerly known as the Hot Lake Hotel and that earned its moniker from the natural thermal springs which occur across its property. Historically, the site's hot springs themselves were utilized by tribes native to the region and were renowned for their purported healing properties. In 1864, one Samuel Fitzgerald Newhart would build a small wooden lodge on the lake's edge. However, this early structure was demolished in 1903 to make way for the construction of a new hotel and various bathhouses. In 1904, construction was started on an adjacent hospital building, which was finished in 1908, and in 1917, Dr. W.T. Phi would purchase the entirety of the campus, re-establishing it as the Hot Lake Sanatorium, and advertising it utilizing the water's curative powers as a driver. In 1931, Dr. Phi would pass on. In 1934, a large portion of the main structure was destroyed in a fire. Through World War II, the site would serve as a school for pilots and nurses, and in 1941, it was acquired by A.J. Roth, who would establish a nursing home and later an asylum within. This nursing home and asylum would remain in operation until 1974, after which ownership was passed through various parties, and by 1990, in 1991, the property had been left all but abandoned, to stand against time, the elements, and the occasional vandal. In 2003, the formerly prestigious lodging was purchased by David Manuel, who would immediately set to work on a series of repairs and renovations, and in 2005, it was finally opened back up to the public for tours. In 2010, the site would offer a bed and breakfast, complete with restored rooms, a spa, restaurant, bronze foundry, and a museum. Most recently, in 2020, the owners of the Grand Hot Springs RV Resort would purchase the lodge and have set to work on massive restorations, which are said to include the Grand Entry Porch, the Veranda, the Balustrade, and historic Spring House. The lodge at Hot Lake Springs is rumored to be haunted by a number of presences, ranging from the souls of the many who stayed as guests, patients, and the like, to the restless spirits of those who were duped into thinking magical water could cure their ailments, only to lose it all. And across the property, both staff and guests have reported ghostly piano music heard drifting on the wind, disembodied voices screaming and crying, run-ins with eerie, shadowy forms that stalk the living, and encounters with a range of full-bodied apparitions in clothing spanning the eras. Several have told of terrifying instances in which it appears as if blood is leaking from the walls, of furniture sighted scooting dangerously around rooms on its own, and of unnatural cold spots that seemingly chill those passing to the bone, and a handful have described encounters with a ghost bearing a likeness to a former gardener who committed suicide long ago. Most disturbingly, those who have dared enter what once acted as the hospital's surgical room have reported spontaneous wafts of the aromas of blood of burning flesh, of human waste, and ultimately, of death, and have described strongly feeling as if they were most certainly in the presence of an overwhelming darkness. Taking its fascinating history into account, and coupling it with a range of spine-tingling ghost stories and urban legends, we felt the lodge at Hot Lake Springs was a solid choice as this list's most haunted place in Oregon. 
Thanks for joining us for our fourth list of some of the most haunted places in Oregon. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, throw us a like, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll catch you all next time.